Hello everyone, I am Aurindam Ghosh. As you all know, I am an assistant professor in the Department of English, uh, Krishna Chandra College, Hetampur Birbhum. And this is my sixth video lecture on the history of the English language. And today we will read uh, the influence of the French language on the English language, which is in your section C. I have already uh, discussed with you the influence of uh, the Latin influence and the Scandinavian influence. Uh, today I will teach the French influence and before that I have already discussed a brief overview of the history of the English language, the semantic change or semantic shift, standardization of the English language and of course outgrowing gender discrimination or gender bias that resides inside the English language. So let's begin the French impact or the French influence on uh, the English language. First let me tell you that the impact or the influence of the French language on the English occurred through multi-dimensional, multi-layered levels. In the level of the syntax, that is on the level of the sentence construction, it's a basically set of rules, principles and processes that govern the structure of the sentences. And on the level of the grammar, which is a set of structural rules governing the composition of the clauses and language, lexicon, lexicon means uh, basically word book or word stock that is vocabulary, as well as orthography. Orthography is basically writing conventions that includes hyphenation, spelling, and of course, pronunciation. The way a language is uh, uttered, a language is spoken. So, we can see that the influence of the English language, uh, influence of the French language on the English, uh, patterns to its syntax, grammar, lexicon, orthography, and pronunciation. So, it changed the English language in its lock, stock, and barrel. Of course, the influence of the French language upon the English began around 1066, at the time of the Norman conquest of England in 1066, when William the Conqueror, William the Duke of the Normandy, invaded the Britain, and uh, then on, uh, the French became the language of the Anglo-Norman court, the language of the government, administration and the elites for several centuries until the aftermath of the hundreds year war in, uh, from 1337 to 1453. So you all know that through the Norman conquest, the influence of the French people on the English court extends. But let us at first have a look into the old English language and how uh, the French and why uh, through this by tracing the historical uh, 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 situation and context we will try to see that why French have tremendously influenced uh, the English language. Why? So before the Norman conquest, before 1066, let us have a look into the English history before 1066. At the beginning of the 11th century, the old English language lacked a well-defined status. Because uh, basically linguistically, uh, the entire Britain, the Great Britain was uh, very much disunited. Uh, various uh, Germanic dialects were there, different Germanic dialects were there and they use diverse dialectical uh, continuums. Various Celtic languages were there uh, 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 from the 4th century down to 8th century. From 450 AD, Saxons, Angles, Jews settled in the south and the east. Germanic dialects prevailed in those areas, uh, including the west and the north of the island, areas like Wales, Cornwall and Scotland, and of course in the Ireland. Then the Vikings from the Scandinavia settled on the island. I have already discussed with you uh, about the Scandinavian influences. And at the dawn of the 11th century, the country was made up of peoples with significantly different languages, mostly Germanic in origin, but with multiple influences. So therefore, at 1066, when uh, at the Battle of Hastings, when these Northmen or Normans confronted uh, uh, the English people, they basically confronted a linguistically disunited people. Bhashatattik dikteke taronik diverse chilo, French influence 
দীর্ঘদিন ধরে ফ্রেঞ্চ বিকামস দ্য ল্যাঙ্গুয়েজ অফ দ্য অ্যাডমিনিস্ট্রেশন সো উইলিয়াম দ্য সেকেন্ড অফ নর্ম্যান্ডি হোয়েন ই ল্যান্ডেড এট দ্য হেস্টিংস অর ইন দ্য সাসেক্স অন সেপ্টেম্বর টোয়েন্টি নাইন ওয়ান থাউজেন্ড সিক্সটি সিক্স হিট অ্যাপ্লাইড ইজ মেন অ্যারাউন্ড দ্য সিটি ওয়াইল ওয়েটিং ফর কিং হ্যারোল্ড দ্য সেকেন্ডস ট্রুপস অন অক্টোবর ফোরটিন এক্সহস্টেড বাই দ্য লং জার্নি টু হেস্টিংস হ্যারোল্ড দ্য সেকেন্ডস ট্রুপস লস্ট দ্য ব্যাটল আফটার ওনলি ওয়ান ডে ফলোইং দ্য ডিফিট অফ দ্য ইংলিশ ডিউ কুইলিয়ম দ্য সেকেন্ড অফ নর্ম্যান্ডি ক্লেম দ্য থ্রোন অ্যাজ দ্য কিং অফ দ্য ইংল্যান্ড অন টোয়েন্টি ফিফথ অফ ডিসেম্বর ওয়ান থাউজেন্ড uh the uh, algate that is william first of england and known as william the conqueror this particular date marked the beginning of more frequent ties between the peoples and the languages of france and england but in reality uh, these links actually existed before the norman conquest of england because the geographical location of normandy facing the english channel encouraged commercial contact or ties with england now such ties were further tightened at the beginning of the 11th century when emma of normandy the daughter of duke of duke richard the first of normandy married king athelal the second of england but it was really following the norman conquest of 1066 that the proto english began to be heavily influenced by the old french and english did not make any large contribution to the french until 8th century 18th century though french language contributed into the english language uh, to an enormous extent so the influence on the english language of the french language began around 1066 through the battle of hastings or through uh, uh, more precisely uh, the norman conquest now uh, as i've already said that uh, the contact between the english and the french people uh, began around uh, ethelred the unready who had married a princess and eventually his son sent edward the confessor who was educated in france and came to the throne of the england and in 1066 william the conqueror after facing a stubborn resistance defeated the english in the battle of the hastings so uh, now this is the historical background of the french influence upon the english the, the the historical background of how the french extends its influence upon the english but now let us enter into the linguistic influence on the english vocabulary the linguistic influence uh, of the normans became deep and permanent because french civilization and culture had such a profound impact on the english that there is scarcely any department of the english life which was not affected by the influence almost all the domains of the english life was tremendously influenced by these uh, french people this influence is uh, clearly reflected in the english vocabulary uh, which uh, has been enriched by distinctly aristocratic words borrowed from the norman conquerors uh, various spheres like government and administration legal and military ecclesiastical that is religious moral food and cooking games and sports khela dhulo prashasonik legal and military aini dik theke ebong samorik dik theke ecclesiastical dhormiyo dik theke noitik dik theke food and cooking games and sports dress and fashion art and architecture feudalism and the words of mutual relationships were borrowed by the english from their french masters tale bujhte parcho ekta birad boro domain er dik theke bihar onek dhoroner sphere theke french influence english language ke influence kore so let us deep delve into uh, these uh, borrowings so what are the borrowings of the uh, english language what are the borrowings of the french loan words that the english has borrowed uh, uh, from the french language first let us discuss about the various words relating to the government administration and politics i have already discussed with you the fact that after 1066 after the battle of the hastings uh, the french language become the language of the upper class for almost uh, two centuries french became the language of the upper class and the english language becomes the language of the lower class uh, uh, 
it is only after the great uh, black death the great plague of 1349 to 1350 that english language gained its uh, regained rather its eminence uh, because uh, after the great plague these lower classes people actually tries to restore the entire london now uh, coming back into the french influence on the english language let us uh, begin with the words relating to the government administration and politics the french left the old english words king and the queen intact but apart from these nearly all the words uh, relating to the government and the highest administration are french as for example crown state government reign uh, realm sovereign power uh, minister council authority parliament people nation all these words which are inextricably interconnected with the governance and administration of a nation is all these words are french now let us uh, discuss with words uh, relating to the feudalism few the concept of the feudalism was imported uh, from france and with it were introduced a number of new words words like prince peer denoting various scales of the rank uh, words denoting the court life words like court courtiers noble words like honor go glory and heraldry denoting the honor and the glory of the medieval knights or the uh, or those who were associated with the court all these words uh, were being borrowed from the french language old english words like lord lady earl were retained and the word count uh, is being used for foreigners though earl's wife was countess so the word count countess honor glory heraldry court courtiers noble prince peer various words relating to the feudalism have been borrowed from the french language now uh, let us discuss about the military words borrowings from the realm of the military the aristocratic classes as a matter of course took into their hands the management of military affairs so english has borrowed a host of military words like war peace battle siege army navy officer lieutenant soldier soldier etc some words borrowed purely as military words are now used outside the military sphere as for example challenge danger escape challenge danger escape these words have been borrowed from the uh, military realm but they are now in fact used outside of the military realm now let us discuss about some of the law terms the introduction of the french law terms was a natural consequence of the fact that the power was in the hands of the norman upper class people so various french words like justice judge jury suit plaintiff uh, uh, defendant uh, plaintiff versus defendant erokom bhabe mamla hoy je mamla ruju koreche ebong je against e mamla plead summon attorney session crime so all these law terms uh, become very uh, uh, popularized into the english vocabulary some law terms have gone into the common use and belong to the ordinary vocabulary of everyday life as for example marry marriage prove false hair defend and prison are common to the legal and military words petty has come from such judicial phrases as petty and jury uh, petty has come from uh, judicial phrases like petty and jury and uh, petty treason etc the con crime ta kotha deep seta bojhabar jonno in fact pani has come from uh uh cuisine which means inferior in rank and which still remains a lot term in english in ordinary vocabulary the spelling adopted as pani now there are some phrases in english in which the adjective is invariably placed after the noun taken bodily from the french as for example hair mail issue uh a uh, later patent attorney general uh etc these words have also been borrowed from french now let us discuss about the french ecclesiastical terms terms denote uh, coming from the religion as ecclesiastical matters were also chiefly under the control of the upper classes 
we find the great many French words connected with the charts such as religion, uh, service, trinity, saviour, angel, saint, abbey, cloister, altar, clergy, friar, miracle, French, pray, sermon, etc. They have also been borrowed from the French language. Words pertaining to the moral ideas. Now, uh, various words uh, from the uh, realm of the morality because as uh, teachers of the religion, uh, religion has its own uh, baggage of instructing people with the moral lessons. So, uh, as the clergy who are teachers of religion, they are also teachers of morality. The whole gamut of the words pertaining to the moral ideas was introduced by them from the French language. For example, words like virtue, vice, dosh, gun, charity, beauty, kortobo, conscience, vivek, grace, cruel, chaste, covet, desire, jealous, pity, discipline, mass. These, these words have also been borrowed from the French language. Now, uh, let us have a look into the words denoting relations in society between the Normans and the English. Now, in addition to these words taken from the different spheres, there are also other words of more general meaning borrowed from the French, which uh, point to the relations between the Normans and the English. The relation between the Norman conquerors and the English was somewhat between the masters and the servants. So some French words significant of these relations were introduced by the Normans. Words like madam, master, mistress, command, obey, reach, poor, riches, poverty, money, cash, rain, servant. All these words have been uh, introduced by the French people. Now let us discuss about uh, various French loan words denoting the family relationship, that is blood relationship. It is uh, quite curious to note that all the current terms of the family relationship outside the immediate circle of the household have been also adopted from the French language. Terms like uncle, aunt, nephew, niece and cousin, these have, have been borrowed from the French language. Except in the case of the father and the mother, uh, which uh, were old English in nature, which survived. And apart from that, in fact, uh, grandfather and the grandmother is actually half English because it has been derived uh, from the French word grand sire and grand name. Okay. Uh, so uh, we can see that words like sire and dame, which as we have just seen, were originally applied to the parents as terms of respect. So in this way, grandfather and grandmother, in fact, is half French in nature. Now let us discuss about words relating to the food, cooking, and animals cooked. The French are noted for their greater luxury of cooking. They were uh, people who are very much luxurious and who uh, invested a lot of their time on the cooking on the, uh, 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 on the cooking of the food and new inventing new cuisine. So the English borrowed many words of the French origin which indicated improved methods of cooking and the better standard of the food such as the sauce, boil, fry, roast, toast pastry, soup, jelly, etc. Then again, names of the animals dressed and cooked for the table. Usually the Norman masters were all borrowed from the French. Now this borrowing indicated the superiority of the French cuisine. Uh, as for example, the art and style of cooking and the Norman right to superior food. So words for the animals were cooked are of the French origin and dear French names such as the beef. Beef means uh, cooked flesh of the ox. Veal, veal is the flesh of the calf as food, as veal, veal cutlet. Mutton, flesh of the sheep when cooked as food, as in mutton chop. A pork, flesh of the swine. Bacon, bacon flesh from the 
sides in the back of the peak salted and smoked brown for example flesh of the peak out in a pot for preservation and vanishing 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 is actually flesh of the deer used as food so you can see all these various food items beef veal mutton pork bacon brown vanishing have been borrowed from the french origin the relationship between the two nations is indicated by the fact that the norman masters left the care of the living animals to the lower classes because uh, and the english serfs had nothing to do with the cooked meat of these animals so it's been clear that the cooked food has been cooked by the masters but all these words this pig swine so the uh, the animals have been actually uh, uh, nourished by the nurtured by the native english people so english people are were serfs and french people were masters and hence the names of these animals in their lifetime are english in origin terms like ox calf sheep swine boar deer which are all english names but the masters had a right to superior food so when these animals were cooked for their masters tokun eguloke ranna kora hoto who ate the meal not much of the meat was left to the uh, left to be eaten by them so they could not be acquainted so much with the foreign names of the cooked meat which when served on the table assumed the french names like beef veal mutton pork bacon brown venison etc breakfast for example is an humble meal so the word is english but dinner supper feast are sumptuous meals enjoyed by the normal masters and hence they are french in origin breakfast shakal bela khaba jodio britain a breakfast a very important food but uh, various other uh, sumptuous meals like dinner supper feast were all uh, english uh, were all uh, french in origin words are relating to the enjoyment of the life pastimes games and sports life to the french appeared brighter than the english they knew how to enjoy life and secure the best things to themselves they in their cheerful and carefree mood had ample leisure to enjoy various pastimes and entertainments so in case of the entertainments relating to the sports and games khela dhulo each of the french the cook time dito enjoyment entertainment leisure uh, it for various words relating to the enjoyment of life to the past times various games and sports eguro kintu prochur french loan word english e eshechhe for example uh, words like joy pleasure ease comfort delight flowers fruits desire etc terms relating to the past times like cheese uh, falcon query send track words are relating to the games and sports like cards dice partner trump deuce sports have been borrowed into the english vocabulary words relating to the uh, dress and the fashion words like apparel dress costume garment fashion luxury adorn all these words have been also borrowed uh, from the french language the english language words relating to the art architecture artisans etc have also been borrowed into the english uh, words like art beauty color image design figure ornament paint etc and at the same time words of the technical significance related to the architecture যে সমস্ত শব্দগুলো অনেক বেশি টেকনিক্যাল আর্কিটেকচারের ক্ষেত্রে কেমন করে একটা বিরাট বাড়ির একটা পার্টিকুলার পিলার উঠছে পিলার শব্দটা ফর এক্সাম্পল ইস ফ্রেঞ্চ ওয়ার্ড আর্ক টাওয়ার ইজ এ ফ্রেঞ্চ ওয়ার্ড ভল্ট যেখানে টাকা পয়সা গচ্ছিত রাখা হয় বা একটা সিকিউরেটিভ চেম্বার পর কলম প্যালেস ক্যাসল অল দিস ওয়ার্ডস আর ফ্রেঞ্চ ওয়ার্ডস রিলেটিং টু ভেরিয়াস কাইন্ডস অফ আর্টিসানস টু ক্যাটার টু দ্য নিডস অফ দ্য ফ্যাশনেবল আপার ক্লাস words like tailor carpenter butcher mason painter we show most of the word french the artisans who pursued homely and elementary occupations for catering the needs of the common people have stuck to their native names such as baker miller smith weaver shoemaker fisherman shepherd etc which are all very humble professions borrowed from also a uh, 
these uh, professions actually stuck to their native names. They they were English in nature. One of the tailor, carpenter, butcher, mason, painter, even the sophisticated job, even the master they employ. So naturally, a word will French, a word will English. Words relating to the furniture, table, chair, etc. But the humble stool is English. So in this way, we can see uh, the great difference between the French borrowings and the Scandinavian borrowings. While the Scandinavian borrowings are very democratic in nature, uh, they are quite humble in nature. The French borrowings are quite sophisticated. Now, words of uh, exclamation and words used in everyday expressions. Uh, the foregoing linguistic evidences clearly shows that the social and the cultural conditions of the Normans were superior to those of the English. Hence, uh, various uh, uh, words depicting melancholy, sadness, or human sorrow is also uh, uh, in nature to, uh, uh, is also relating to the French, like Alice. Like sure, adieu, very everyday expressions like air, age, beast, change, cheer, cover, cry, large, latter, later, place, point, turn. All these words are fringe in origin. The borrowing of these non technical words is connected with the English snobism because snob is one who has exaggerated respect for others on account of their high rank or great wealth or one who despises others on account of their low rank of the wealth. So this word snob has also actually borrowed from the French language. Uh, not only this, uh, we can also see uh, through various resemblances of the word, uh, uh, one can tell exactly how much uh, modern reach owes to the Old English reach means powerful and Old French reach. From this Old French reach, the word uh, reaches has also been derived. For, uh, for example, French choice uh, was easily assimilated in English from the similarity between the native word choose and the French choice, given rise to the modern English spelling choice, C-H-O-I-C-E. And the French spelling was C H O I X. For example, Old French Ail, I S L E, was uh, easily assimilated into the English language from similarity between Old English Island and Old French Ail, I S L E, S remain uh, completely unpronounced or silent. And from this I S L E N D, Island, Old English Island, uh, is, is being created. Old French main was easily assimilated into the English from the similarity between the Old English uh, Megan, that is strength, and Old French main. Uh, similarly, uh, we can uh, say that the in English nouns and voiceless consonants and the corresponding verbs had voiced consonants. As for example, the English noun house, coming from the Old English has, had voiceless consonant. S is pronounced as ace. The English verb house, coming from the Old English Hussian, had voice consonant. So, uh, so in this way we can see that how uh, the grammar actually influenced, uh, the, the English grammar have been greatly influenced by the French grammar. In the same way, uh, we can also see that uh, the assimilation was further facilitated by the habit of using French words side by side along with their native synonyms. The synonyms served more or less as the interpretation of the French words for the benefit of those who were not yet familiar with the more refined French expression. This helped to a great extent the process of borrowing uh, from the French. In the first place, the synonym served as the interpreter of the French words as for example charity is a French word which actually in English means love. An ignorance French word that is means unwisdom in English. So in this way, uh, the charity, uh, uh, the, the word charity and the ignorance have been borrowed from the French language. In some cases, the native words is more popular, in the genre of you, nearer the nation's heart, while the French word is more polite and formal. As for example, cottage 
is finer than the native heart but heart is a much more used word much more popular word french aid is to second another's exertion while native help expresses a deeper need than aid on the other hand the french cordial is more formal than the native hearty which is near the nation's heart and uh, in other cases uh, the native word is colloquial the french literary as for example begin uh, native is more colloquial than the french comments which is literary uh, for example hide the native word hide is more colloquial than the conceal uh, which is literary and feed the native is more colloquial than uh, the now wish which is literary hinder which is a native word is more colloquial than prevent which is literary so thus uh, so this is uh, these are some of the french influences that we must talk about now uh, talking about uh, hybridism we can also say that various hybrid words like native uh, prefix along with the french word uh, created a new word for example native prefix over and french word power created over power native prefix out french word cry created outcry native un and french pleasant created unpleasant native un and french just created unjust french prefix dis and native word believe created disbelief french prefix re and the native word birth created rebirth similarly there are lots of examples like duke plus a uh, uh, native word and the native ending french word and the native ending with the s so dukes nobles plus the superlative ending with s noblest preach preach preaching preach is a french word plus ing created preaching there are also ending with the uh, uh, derivative ending able uh, uh, basically it is a, a, a kind of a, a hybrid created of the high hybrid word for example serviceable reasonable drinkable suitable etc so uh, coming into the conclusion we must say that the coming to the french influence on the english language we must say that french people exercises a, a sort of a, a kind of a, a sophisticated influence upon the english people and uh, the thing that they created are very sophisticated uh, they are uh, influence upon the english language was not only on the level of the administrative and the political but and judiciary but also they have there are lot of french loan words uh in the case of the cooking in the case of uh uh, uh various uh, foods etc so uh, coming into the food and drinking words like cafe restora menu mayonnaise uh, relating to the dress and furnishings words like blouse rosed a uh, prince necks uh, lodgings uh, uh and uh, retinue these are all french for example in case of the vehicle cabriola uh, from which the word cab the cab has been formed and military and political words like barrage communuc chassis etc have been formed so a uh, french influence upon the english language is very sophisticated artificial as well as it gives the english language a great vocabulary it enriches the english language to a great extent and uh, what we can say is that uh, the different pronunciations of the french loan words certain reshaping of the old french loan words and change of the meanings of a few loans in the light of the modern french be a testimony to the fact that between the french and the english uninterrupted contact must have been going on and this continued contact constitutes a well marked contrast between the french and the scandinavian influence i have already talked about the difference between the french and the scandinavian influence in the previous video while the scandinavian influence is much more uh, i would say uh, uh, domestic and democratic in character the french is much much more sophisticated and artificial in nature so thank you this is the french influence upon the english language we'll be back in the next video